Hello, we are going to do part two of transport in humans. This will be a bit more detailed. We are going to take a close look at how the heart looks like. We are going to take a close look at how the heart functions. Okay, so we are going to start with the structure of the heart. This is a blank diagram of the heart, human heart. We are going to start by first uh, drawing the right side left side dichotomy. So as mentioned in the previous presentation, the right side of the heart is on your left. Vice versa for the left side, because we are looking at the heart as though a person is standing in front of you. In the middle of the heart, we can see a septum. A septum is the wall that divides the left and the right side of the heart. If I were to draw that wall all the way, yeah, this is roughly how it looks like. Okay, next. We're going to first talk about the right atrium and the left atrium. The right atrium is the upper chamber on this side. The right atrium receives the deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body coming through the vena cava. There's a upper vena cava and a lower vena cava. We call them superior and inferior vena cava. But this is not strictly necessary for everyone because there are some schools which will want you to know this, but quite a lot of schools do not. You are fine if you just call them the vena cava or vena cavae. The E is for the plural. So that's for the deoxygenated blood side. On the other side, we have left atrium. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs coming through the pulmonary veins. Now when you see the word pulmonary, it means it's connected to the lungs. In this case, the pulmonary veins means that it's carrying blood from the lung back to the heart. Veins bring back to the heart. Okay. On the lower side of this picture, we have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. The right ventricle receives blood from the right atrium. The left ventricle receives blood from the left atrium. Do take note, the wall of the left ventricle and the right ventricle are different in thickness. The left ventricle is much thicker. The left ventricle is much thicker than the right ventricle because it's needed to pump blood to the rest of the body which is quite a lot to do. Separating the two atria on the top from the two ventricles from the bottom are valves. We're going to talk about the tricuspid valve on the right side first. The tricuspid valve are these two flaps of tissue over here. They function like a one-way door. When the right atrium pumps blood into the right ventricle, or as long as the blood pressure in the right atrium is higher than in the right ventricle, blood will flow up to down. If the right ventricle contracts, if the right ventricle is to pump blood, it will contract and the pressure in the right ventricle will increase. Blood will not be able to go back because the valve will close. How does it close? It's very simple. You can see the shape of the flaps like this. If the blood pushes back, the valves will just shut. The same thing happens on the left side of the heart. The bicuspid or mitral valve is the name of the valve that divides the left atrium from the left ventricle. The same thing happens. Blood can flow easily from the left atrium to the left ventricle as long as the pressure is higher in the left atrium. If the left ventricle contracts, the blood cannot flow backwards because the valve will shut. Okay, next we're going to talk about the aorta and the pulmonary artery. These two are arteries. The pulmonary artery is this T-shaped one over here, this T-shaped big artery over here. It's actually just one artery branching out into two. This is because the pulmonary arteries divide 
to supply the two lungs. Pulmonary means lungs. So the pulmonary artery divides into the right and the left artery to supply blood to the lungs. The aorta, on the other hand, is this looping one. The loop goes downwards. Now it's blocked by the heart, so I'm just going to trace its path. This is the path the aorta takes. At the top, we can see three branches. The aorta is the largest artery in the body, so it has a special name. The aorta's job is to deliver blood to every other part of the body. Each of these branches here will branch out even more, supplying your head, your shoulders, your arms. The aorta that continues downward over here, this one will supply the lower part of your body, your stomach, kidneys, legs. It carries oxygenated blood. Okay. Dividing the arteries from the ventricles are these special semilunar valves here and here. The semilunar valves are also for preventing backflow of blood. They function as one-way doors. When the ventricles contract, blood can easily go into their respective arteries, the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Whenever the ventricles relax, blood is unable to go backwards because the valves were shut. Okay? Alright, now let's look at a quick summary of blood flow. We always describe the blood flow in the heart starting with deoxygenated blood. We always say the oxygenated blood returns to the right side of the heart, coming through the vena cava into the right atrium. Here and then from the right atrium into the right ventricle, from the right ventricle into the arteries here. The pulmonary artery delivers blood to the lungs. Once the lung reoxygenates the blood, the oxygenated blood will return to the heart, coming to the left side through the pulmonary veins. It enters the left atrium, the left atrium, to the left ventricle, from the left ventricle to the aorta. The aorta loops, so there will be blood going to the top of your body and blood going to the lower part of your body. Okay. So this is a simple... This is a simple animation showing how the blood pumps through the heart. The left and the right side of the heart contract and relax at the same time. It is the atria and the ventricles that have different times for contraction. Let's replay the animation. First, the right and left atria receive blood. and then they pump, delivering blood to the ventricles. Immediately after, the ventricles contract, pumping blood into the arteries. After that, there will be a slight pause before the next cycle begins. Okay. For general purposes, you should try to remember every important part of the heart, know how to label them. The most important are the four separate chambers. The four chambers, the left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle and the right ventricle. There's an easy way to remember upper chambers and lower chambers. The upper chambers are the atria, the lower chambers are the ventricles. Look at the letter A and the letter V. A kind of looks like an up arrow. V kind of looks like a down arrow. So you can remember that way. Atria on top, ventricles below. Okay? 
next to remember the blood flow okay to remember the blood flow the right atrium relaxes to fill up with blood that flowed in from the rest of the body. The right atrium contracts to force blood into the right ventricle. Right ventricle contracts to push blood into the lungs. Once the blood becomes oxygenated in the lungs, it flows back into the left atrium of the heart. The left atrium contracts to push blood into the left ventricle. The left ventricle then contracts to pump blood to the rest of the body. The oxygenated blood flows from the rest of the body back into the heart on the right side. Although the blood flow follows the path from deoxygenated through the left side to the oxygenator on the right side, remember that both the left and the right side of the heart contract and relax at the same time. <laughs> 